My name is Lassun Yusuf. I represent the Report Drone, along with our Lu Shibufara constituency, I'm from the state of Oshun. Right, Honorable Speaker, may I move that the House do receive the report of the Adult Committee on the Beef and Act to repeal the National Minimum Wage Act, Chapter N61, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004, and enact the National Minimum Wage Bill 2019 to prescribe a national minimum wage for workers and for related matters. House Bill 1602. I so move. Mr. Speaker, we all know what minimum wage is all about. And of course, since it is the duty of the National Assembly to from time to time look into the minimum wage matter when it comes by way of the bill, either executive or private bill. In this matter, sometime last week, the executive sent a bill to amend some section of the principal act of the minimum wage, of which one of the most important amendments that we are about to carry out is moving the minimum wage from 18,000 to 27,000 that was recommended in the bill. In short, yesterday, we had a public hearing which was held live, and it was there then that we, are, we realized that the tripartite committee that was set up by Mr. President actually did recommend 30,000 as the basic, as the minimum wage. It was a public hearing that was well attended. From the side of the executive, we had the Minister of Labor and Employment, the Minister of Finance, the Minister of Budget and National Planning was heavily represented by the Director General in that ministry. And of course, we have the Nigeria Labor Congress, we have the TUC, NOGE, and what they call the National National uh, Employers Consultative Association. They, they, were, they were there too. And uh, they all presented their report. But of importance, of importance. Please, please, honorable members, please, please, silence, please. Of importance was the report of the Trapatite Committee, which of course formed part of the attachment that was used in. Uh, you know, reaching this final position. And I want to quote Mr. Speaker, when you were delivering your uh, speech yesterday to declare the, the thing open, everybody believes that a worker must have what we call a living wage, not even the minimum wage. And everybody is of the opinion that the time is ripe and that it is even overdue. So specifically from the executive bill that the, the executive sent, the only thing that was touched, if there is any, is the issue of the basic or what we call the minimum wage itself. And of course, from the experience of the last uh, few months, without standing uh, somehow, we decided for the first time that we will leave the bill as it was presented to us because most of the provisions of the bill itself are fantastic, and uh, we don't need to start changing, changing them. The other thing that is important there is that one of the provisions now is that the bill will now be reviewed, when it becomes the act of the National Assembly, it will now be reviewed every five, five years. So that's one of the provisions. Another provision that is important is that the issue of minimum wage of 30,000 naira does not cover those who employ less than 25 people. It's important, it's part of the provision, those who employ between zero to 25 people, or one to 25 people rather, are not. Uh, and the question was asked yesterday from Minister of Finance, which he appropriately answered. Now that the minimum wage is 30,000, I think Honorable Pajok asked that question. Now that the minimum wage is 30,000, 
And because of that, the person who is earning the minimum wage will now be earning more than 200,000 naira per annum. Is it taxable? And the Minister of Finance answered in affirmative that the tax law says that if you earn above, I think, 160 or 200,000, then you will be taxed. So the uh, Nigerian public should know this because uh, from, the, from the past, when it was just 18,000, uh, those at that level were not taxed. But once this one is assented to, then that means everybody will now be taxed. And it is now, it now depends on tax authority, maybe to come up with a, another, some, some sort of amendment in their tax, in their tax uh, act, to see if we can provide succor for the people who are at that level. Uh, finally, we, I thank the, the House of Representatives through the Speaker for giving us that opportunity to work on this uh, particular bill in a manner that shows that uh, we are truly the representative of the people. So those are the things we did. And like I said, the hearing was well attended. Members took active part. Even those members that were not part of that committee who probably saw it on television came over and they took active part. Thank you very much and thank you for the opportunity. Okay. So that we can pay attention to the details. Now we heard from the chairman. <laughs> we heard from the chairman of the ad hoc committee that uh, superintended over the public hearing of yesterday on the bill. And so we will proceed to consider the recommendation of the ad hoc committee. Thereafter, we'll take on the provision of um, the bill. So um, we go to the clauses. It's on page eight. This one is I carried, carried, close two, carried, three, four, we have already carried it. Close. We have even carried um, close four. So we've passed that place, Honorable uh, Chinda. Eh? So we will now go to this one, Ba. So we'll carry this one as amended. So, um, Honorable colleagues, we will go to the main bill, which was attached. So we we'll take them clauses by clauses. Clause one, which is objective of this bill, carried. Clause two deals with uh, the application, carried. Clause three, carried as amended, carried. As amended. We are past clause three, leader, except you are raising it has been carried. Exemptions clause four as amended. Okay, there was no amendment to clause four. There's no amendment to clause four. No, no, is this one dealing with 25 persons? No amendment. Return. Okay, carried. Establishment clause five. Clause six, composition. Clause seven, which is part of the tripartite committee, carried. Clause eight, carried. Clause nine, carried. Clause ten, carried. Clause eleven.
Clause 12, monitoring and compliance. Clause 13. Clause 14, relating to offenses. Is it carried as amended or just carried? No, it wasn't. So carry, leader. Sorry, Mr. Speaker, I was just trying to make an observation on the commence, commencement date. Okay. Mm, I was asking the DS, and he said the commencement was six months after ascent. And I believe we should do something about that. I think we should have a date specific, a date specific for commencement. Because if you say you leave it six months after ascent, this bill can take effect next year. And that's not what we want. Sure. So we defeat the purpose. So I think there should be a date specific, whether September, whether the whatever date we agree. And that would also put pressure for the presidency to assent to the bill, rather than leave it open, open wide. Rules and business. Speaker, there's a legal principle that is tried, and that is that a law takes effect or commences from the date that it is signed. So the moment the president appends his signature, the law becomes effective. If it's not saying we are taking another six months, we are introducing some controversy into this bill. So to me, the bill as passed now is good law. The day the president puts his red, red barrel or green barrel and, and signs it, from that day, the, law, the bill becomes effective. That is the law. Well, in, in order to have commencement dates, and that's why you have that clause, commencement date, to take effect from, for certain reasons. It is not automatic that once you sign, it must be law. That's why you have clauses like the sunset clause. You have clauses like the sunset clause. Mr. Speaker, in this particular case, in this particular case, for you to be able to implement, for you to be able to implement, there must be sufficient budgetary provision. So if, for instance, Mr. President signs, Mr. President signs in a few weeks, where is the budgetary provision? That means it will take effect the moment it signs, in 30 days' time. So that's why we need a commencement date, giving them room and enough time to make adjustments to the budget. We pass the budget, and then it takes effect from whatever date we agree. Raised by the leader are quite valid. Sorry, I'm coming. Because we're dealing with a law that in the absence of appropriation cannot be implemented. Because um, if monies were to be mopped somewhere for, for these salaries to be paid, then the House can now raise query as to the fact that they were mopped without appropriation of the National Assembly. So I know that commencement, the, the general principles is um, rightly stated by the chairman rules and business in the sense that laws are supposed to take effect from the day they are assented to. But where you have commencement, it is in a situation like this where we need to make appropriations for the payment of salaries to be effected. So if you now say, oh, the day the president signed, except you now walk out, uh, what is it called, arrears, letter after the budget, then fine when the budget is passed. Otherwise, we owe it a duty. Honorable Betty, please. Oh, Mr. Speaker, Sorry, Honorable sorry, Honorable Dan Baram first. I recognize Dan Baram. Uh, Honorable Betty Apiafi. That we amend this bill to include that the bill will become effective, that is the commencement date, will be from the date it is assented to. I so move. The eyes have it.